let's see how the lens works in uh, low light. What's up guys, my name is Mark, blah, 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 who cares? This video, we're going to cross the thin red line and into the world of the prestigious Canon FD 50mm f1.2 L series lens. I wish this lens were mine, but I picked it up for a friend and he's given me a few weeks with it to test it out, which is great because it honestly feels like I'm in the presence of greatness. And I'm not worthy. The Canon FD 50mm f1.2 L series lens is an aspherical floating element lens and has a reputation for being one of the most optically advanced 50mm manual focus lenses ever sold anywhere. That's a big deal. First released in October 1980 for around 850 US dollars, it's been one of Canon's flagship lenses until Canon's FD reign came to an end in 1987 in favor of the more advanced EOS autofocus system. Now one thing that I found surprising with this lens is it's not much larger or heavier than slower lenses of the same focal length. The filter ring is only 52 millimeters and considering super speed lenses usually have a lot of glass to collect as much light as possible, the front elements tend to be rather large, but not this one. Now the speed and size of this lens are attributed to the fact that it uses the aspherical floating element lens design, which for the time was unprecedented. Neither Nikon or Leica were using this design in any of their 50mm f1.2 lenses. Nikon? Nikon. Nikon? It's Nikon or Nikon? I don't know. Now this particular design resulted in sharper images, especially at wider apertures it can also minimize other optical imperfections such as chromatic aberrations. Now, I guess that's where the reputation of the most optically advanced 50 millimeter lens stems from. All right, enough chatter. Let's go out and take some shots to see how this thing actually performs. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good day to shoot. All right, I just gotta get my stuff. At f1.2, this is the fastest SLR lens I've ever had the chance to shoot with. A wide open, the depth of field becomes extremely shallow. With such a shallow depth of field, it can make shooting wide open challenging. With a bit of training, it is possible to get accurate focus on slow moving or stationary subjects. Now I believe a good photographer can always find interesting ways to exploit these types of characteristics. It's this creative freedom with experimentation that really adds to the benefit of having such a fast lens. As we stop down a bit, the overall sharpness of the image improves. But the natural colors the lens renders are consistently very accurate across the full f-stop range. Now like most fast lenses, vignetting is quite strong wide open, but stop down, it's not a problem. Now because of the historical aspherical design of the lens, the bokeh balls resemble cat eyes or onion rings, especially near the border. Now, this isn't traditionally recognized as charming bokeh, but like so many things in photography, what is pleasant to one person may strike a chord with another. In 
Another fast 50 millimeter lens I have is the super multi-coated Takamar 50 millimeter f1.4. And just for comparison's sake, let's, let's see how these two lenses perform against one another. The Takamar does have a warmer hue to it. With no color correction, the yellowish tint is due to the thorium glass, which has yellowed with age over the last close to 50 years. Now because of that, the natural colors on the Canon straight out of the camera are more accurate to real life. Now, apart from the color differences, which can easily be corrected in post, I can't actually spot any major optical differences between the two lenses. Now I probably should have taken a few more shots, but I never really intended to make a scientific comparison between the two. Besides, you can see here I'm running out of light pretty quickly. And there it goes. Let's see how the lens works in uh, low light. With its f1.2 aperture, the light gathering capabilities of this lens are excellent. Paired with a good full frame sensor camera, which usually perform a little bit better in lower light conditions, this lens opens up an entire new set of possibilities to shoot. Things you can do with a tripod. Now this Canon FD 50mm f1.2 really is a versatile lens. It works so well as a sharp, compact, fast 50, and is great for pretty much any type of photography you may be into. And there is just so much you can do with this lens in both digital and film photography, as well as commercial video purposes. The best thing about it is that you don't have to trade an f1.2 aperture for compactness. It really is a strong performing 50 millimeter vintage prime lens worthy of that red stripe. The only real downside to this lens is in fact the price, which varies widely depending on where you look. A quick glance at eBay and it's going for 500 US dollars versus smaller online markets or trade shows, I've seen it go for about 250 to 300. My question to you based on what you've seen, is the thin red line worth it? Do you think this lens lives up to its reputation today? I'd love to hear what you guys think. Now my time with this lens may be close to being over, but it's destined for a full Simod lens conversion for commercial video use. It's about to go on and have a whole new second life in the pro video world. Not too bad for a 39 year old lens. All right, guys, well, that's it for this video. Thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Just get some nat sound, room tone.